Today is Tuesday, June 29th. I'm coming to you with part two of two different devotionals for today. They are both from the same chapters that is our scripture reading, 1 Samuel chapter 12, 1 Samuel chapter 13. The title of this devotional is Character Flaws in Leaders Breed or Breeds Insecurity in the Lives of Their Followers. And so we're going to pick up our study now focusing mostly on 1 Samuel chapter 13. The previous devotional was 1 Samuel chapter 12. 1 Samuel chapter 13. Now it was the second year of Saul's reign when he chose to maintain a small standing force of 3,000 men and the balance of his army, which numbered 330,000 men, was sent home to their, to their houses, to their fields, to their lands. Now, uh, Saul divided his army of 3,000 into two different companies. 2,000 men stayed with him. The other 1,000 men he sent to be subject to his son, whose name was Jonathan. Now, assuming Saul ordered his son to lead a charge on a Philistine garrison, the raid was successful. And Saul disingenuously proclaimed to the nation, Let the Hebrews hear, and all Israel heard, say that Saul get that now, not Jonathan, that Saul had smitten the garrison of the Philistines. Well, the consequences of that raid was that it was an abomination to the Philistines, 1 Samuel chapter 13, 3 and 4. Now, what the offense was beyond attacking the garrison, it might be that it was a violation of some covenant, some peace treaty that Saul had established with the Philistines. Well, with only 3,000 men, Israel found itself soon surrounded by a great Philistine army that dwarfed its stand-in army. Now remember, its stand-in army is only 3,000 men. And yet a raid around uh, Saul and his 2,000 men were 30,000 chariots. Now, that might also include wagons carrying gear and supplies but 30,000 chariots, 6,000 horsemen, and then people that are described as that which would be the sand on the seashore. So it was a innumerable amount of soldiers that were there to attack Israel. Now seeing the magnitude of the force aligned against them, Israel's soldiers panicked, and they fled Saul's encampment, seeking safety, hiding in the caves of the hillsides, and some even fled out of the country across the Jordan River. Now Saul had waited on Samuel's arrival at his encampment. However, with his army reduced now from 3,000 to 600 frightened men, Saul faced an untenable situation. The king's lack of faith in the Lord and his flawed character that we'll see again and again began to haunt Israel. And we read in verse 8 of 1 Samuel 13 that the people scattered from him. Now understand the debilitating fear among the people. Saul realized all would be lost if the people's confidence was not restored. Now, sadly, Saul decided to take matters into his own hands. He usurped Samuel's role and authority as the priest and the prophet of Israel, and Saul offered sacrifices to the Lord, that which was forbidden by the law. Well, when, when the sacrifices were ended, Saul received news that Samuel, the prophet, was approaching the camp, and he went out, hypocritically I might add, to meet the old prophet. And Samuel did not hesitate to confront the king, and Samuel asked Saul, What hast thou done? Well, Saul's failed character and his inclination for deceit and folly were soon were on full display. First of all, he pretended to honor the prophet by going out to meet him, that he might salute. Literally, the meaning there is to bless him or to kneel before him. In reality, Saul had usurped the prophet's authority as priest in Israel. He accused Samuel of failing to come in a timely manner within the seven days that had been appointed, when in fact Saul had come on the seventh day. Well, Saul maintains he had forced himself literally compelled himself and offered a burnt offering. But we also know, verse 11 and 12, that that was a lie. You see, though Samuel was an old man, the fire of righteousness still burned brightly in his soul. 
not mincing words, he boldly declared to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. In other words, Saul, you would have had a dynasty. Generations would have followed you of your lineage on the throne of Israel. But Saul has sinned, he's disobeyed, and he has rebelled against God. Well, the consequences of Saul's impropriety were dreadful, for he had not only failed the Lord, but his family would be cut off from the throne of Israel. And yet he was only in the second year of his reign as king. And Saul was told these words, 1 Samuel 13 and verse 14, The Lord had sought a man after his own heart, and the Lord had commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. And Samuel departed, and Saul numbered his men, and he counted only about 600 men. How desperate was the hour! The Philistines were terrorizing the people, sending out three companies of raiders in all directions, reducing Israel to poverty. The Philistines had reduced Israel to complete dependence also, for they had no blacksmiths in the land, no, no laborers that knew how to fashion swords and spears. In fact, even to sharpen their farm implements, Israel had to go to the Philistines. We read in verse 22, there were only two swords in all Israel, that of Saul's and of his sons, Jonathan's. Now let me close with a principle for you and a thought. Character flaws in leaders breed insecurity in their followers. Whether it is the, the president of a nation, the governor of a state, the mayor of a city, the principal of a school, the president of a college, or the pastor of a church. Character flaws breed insecurity in their followers. That's true also of fathers and their households. You see, Israel came to recognize the character imperfections in Saul, and they lost faith and courage. As a result, the nation turned from the Lord and were haunted by the failures of its leaders. Now think about it. A weak military, national threats within and without Israel, and the loss of manufacturing capability, that of blacksmithing, to a foreign adversarial nation. If you think about it, America, it sounds familiar, doesn't it? God bless. I look forward to continuing this study tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye-bye.